Erev Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Looking back at this just a little bit, the message we brought out the other day, uh, just yesterday, in fact, uh, uh, has Russia sold out Iran? Another headline here, the commentator, uh, for a stake in Israeli gas. See, that's, uh, as we know, the this whole article has really gotten the people all stirred up in, in regards to whether or not we are seeing the the hooks being put into the jaws uh, of Gog, of Magog, uh, the Prince of Tubal, uh, etc. there. And as we know, many scholars have always believed uh, that the land of Gog and Magog is not that of Russia. It is mainly uh, uh, prophecy teachers that have le leaned more towards the idea that Russia is the one that will be this great army that comes down uh, and, and takes a spoil out of the land, etc. But uh, in, in light of the prophecies and in light of looking at things and the way they're going, Russia has not been forced down to this land whatsoever. And it seems more evident as we begin to dig in the prophecies here that it's not Russia that gets the hook put in the jaw, but it's actually going to be NATO and her alliances there. And if you even think about it, look at Turkey, look at the modern day Turkey that they call that land that's got all these different names attached to it, such as uh, Tubal and, and Gog and Magog and these places there. Most of those places there being a part of Turkey, Turkey had a greater empire. And this is one reason why even some biblical scholars call uh, the part of Europe of today as the land of Gog as well, or Magog. Uh, and the reason why they do is because it was actually under the province of the Turkish Empire at one time. Now, it wasn't the way it was in Ezekiel's time. But anyway, as we look at this, just quickly, I want to point out one thing I think is important, though. And it's in verse 4, And I will turn thee about and put hooks into thy jaws. That's chachaim belachayach. Okay, now, it is in the plural, just like it is in English, the chachaim, okay, the yodmem, making that plural, and the belachayach, yaycha, that word right there that you have here, the double yod, that second yod, is what makes for the word jaws plural right there. If you didn't have that extra yod, it would not be plural. And that just kind of even, again, makes it more to be speaking directly to a NATO force. Russia is just one nation. And not to mention, Russia is not an ally of all the other nations that are mentioned in there, as we shared with you before. So I do believe that this is referring to NATO. Now let me give you a little bit more reason, the reason why we look at this. Now there are several articles out there, like the one Giulio Miotti did here, the Vatican wants the Temple Mount taken from the Jews. Now look at some of the things that he says in here, in the article right here. When, when the pontiff John Paul II ascended the Temple Mount in 2000, Judaism's most holiest site, he wasn't welcomed by Israeli officials but by representatives of the Palestinian Authority, and the holy complex was bedecked in Arab flags. It was the Pope's implicit recognition of Islam's hegemony. It uh, was taken to mean that Islam and Christianity, Christianity supersede Judaism and have the right to inherit its holy places. Since then, the Holy See's taken a stance as the ally of, uh, of the heads of the Palestinian Authority in place mostly holy to the Jewish people, become almost a faint accompli. Remember what it says in Daniel, when it says in chapter 11 there, after he signs the, or makes the league, he comes up strong with a small nation. I believe that league was made with the Jewish Congress, not to be confused with the Israeli Knesset, the Jewish Congress, or rabbis uh, from around the world that signed the agreement on the Nostra Aetate this year with the Vatican. I believe this is the league that the Vatican makes with Israel, with their, with their rabbis there. And they even become stronger with the Palestinians. They come up with a strong uh, people, a, a small nation, you might say. And uh, so we're seeing this happen. The Catholic delegitimized of Israel's passes through the War of Jerusalem and the War on Jerusalem passes through the Temple Mount, the site where the Jewish people worship for hundreds of years on a focal point of every practicing Jew's prayers is under assault from the Vatican. Giulio Miotti wrote this article here that was actually on June 30th of 2015. We've interviewed Giulio before here on Israeli News Live. He's an advocate uh, supporter of the Israeli people. He is a 
uh, an Italian journalist, nonetheless. And I'm not sure, but I think Giulio may even be Catholic uh, by faith as well. But he certainly is not afraid to speak his mind when it comes to what the Catholic Church is doing to Israel. So the Catholic delegitimizes of Israel passes through the war on Jerusalem. I also said the Vatican's PLO agreements have been signed to enable the eviction of the Jews from Jerusalem. This follows a memorandum signed by the Palestinian Vatican officials in 2000, which repeated the Vatican call for an international mandate to preserve the, the proper identity and sacred character of Jerusalem. It means a return to a time when half of Israel's capital was under Islamic control and the old city was closed to Jews. The synagogues were desecrated and walls barbed wire and snipers divided the city by force. Now, you can catch this article yourself and, and, and read more of it. In fact, if you would like, I'll post this up on Israeli News Live, our Facebook page, so you can see it there too. Uh, but that's just, you know, that's just letting you know the Vatican is the one that wants this land. And the reason I say this, to bring this out, the Pope of Rome, as it says in Ezekiel, the, the prophecy says about Esau's children or their descendants, which we've proven clearly and emphatically are the Romans of today, the Roman Catholic Church, has stated that these two nations are mine and I will take them. Where And it speaks of it, the land being laid desolate and able to do so. All right, so that's telling you that they're going to take the land because it ends up being a war there. Now watch here. This is another thing I want to bring out to your attention. Time Magazine, several other news articles as well, brought this out. President Obama states here, Mr. Trump will not be president. Now, since when does a president ever state publicly when there is a campaign underway for the next president of the United States, especially in the fact that Mr. Barack Obama is not running for president for a third term, uh, since when does this head of state like this turn around and state publicly that a man will not be president, not even giving him a fair chance to see what he'll do? Well, as he states in here, I have a lot of faith in the American people. President Obama is confident that his successor will not be a businessman and Republican from frontrunner Donald Trump. I continue to believe Mr. Trump will not be president, President Obama said to a news conference in California on Monday uh, of course, this was back on February, February 16th of 2016, only a couple of months ago. But why is he saying that? Well, the reason being, friends, is because they know that Donald Trump is a major problem for the, the whole idea of the NATO agenda to make sure that the Pope of Rome gets Jerusalem and keeps it under his control. It is also a problem for the New World Order agenda. And in this election, we've never seen the things that have happened this election like any other election in American history. Not only has the President, Barack Obama, slammed and threw Donald Trump under the bus, so to speak, but then Pope Francis has... Bernie Sanders invited to, uh, to the Vatican to speak there and does meet with him, uh, pretending like he wasn't going to meet with him because he didn't want to look like it was really a bad thing on politics. It doesn't look like Bernie Sanders will actually become the nominee, but I guarantee you one thing, the Vatican has let the people know who they wanted for their own choice. So I am sure that Mr. Sanders is going to play a great part in the next administration. If not a vice president, he may be brought in there somehow. And it's kind of interesting because Hillary Clinton quit throwing him under the bus a long time ago. Was she planning on bringing him to the, to, into this administration or what? I think she already knows she has the presidency in the bag. So, in light of all this, what do we have going on right now? We have Moscow says plans to create a NATO Black Sea flotilla, uh, flotilla undermine regional security. Uh, this was on TASS News. It's also been on several other uh, news agencies already. April 27th, uh, they brought this out today. The seriously undermined security and stability in this part of the, uh, of the continent, forcing Russia to take adequate countermeasures to ensure its own security. Russia's foreign ministry spokesman, uh, spokesperson notes there. And it does. Even the Ukrainian, Poroshenko, President Poroshenko over there, is saying that they will also participate in any kind of flotilla that the NATO might put together. Romania is the one that has been calling for it. 
And uh, what's it for? Why do they need a bigger military force there? We know that England also, the UK, sent more ships into the region uh, not too long ago as well. A uh, 6,000 strong force that is intended to act as a deterrent to Russia. But what are they doing? They see Russia moved into Syria to secure, secure the, the gas deal with Assad. Even China has... Uh, come in there and backed up Russian forces. And by the way, the reason China is there too is to get their feet wet in combat, uh, to work hand in hand with the Russians to make sure that they can work together in a military theater there. Uh, this is one of the things though that has caused a great concern. And we do know that in the, in the prophecy of Daniel, that king of the north, which I do believe is the Pope of Rome, he's very, he is troubled or excuse me, uh, yeah, the king of the north, he's troubled by tidings out of the north and from the east. So it shows that there is another player in the north which is not the king of the north. I believe that the trouble, the tidings that are troubling him are Russia and China and their advancement there in the Middle East. So what does happen? What does the Pope of Rome do when he sees that Russia is moving in on his territory, especially Israel, where the Pope of Rome already has laid claim to this nation? you got to remember, uh, of course, Putin does represent the, the Russian Orthodox Church, and even though the two leaders have met together with the Pope of Rome there, I don't think the Pope of Rome is going to take too kindly to sharing Israel with uh, Russia or with the, uh, the uh, uh, that is, uh, the Russian Orthodox Krill, he won't be sharing it with him. All right, so what do we have in Daniel 11, chapter, chapter 11, verse 40? And the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow as he passes through. He shall enter also into the beauteous land and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall be delivered out of his hand. Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children, uh, 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 chief of the children of Ammon. By the way, if you see on the bottom of the screen, that's uh, Brother Conrad. He's not, his name's not actually Conrad, but this brother here sends me some wonderful information there. I don't know if you see him on the bottom of the screen. He just sent me a comment there. God bless that, my brother. I, I certainly love him tremendously. Uh, anyway, though, go, going back right back to this here, I want you to notice something really important here. When it speaks about it, he shall enter into the countries. All right? Plural. He's going to enter into the countries. He's coming with ships. Plural. See? And then he comes into the countries. See, many countries there. Even in the Hebrew, all of that is in the plural. Why does it say countries there? Because Russia's in Syria. He's got to deal not only with Syria. Russia's got allies. He's got Iran. He's got Lebanon, the Syrians. They're going to be dealing in with Israel. They're going to be dealing with five nations they've got to take out because they allowed Russia in. Five nations. And he comes down to try to secure back all that he's lost. Pope Rome ain't going to take that too lightly, guys. That's why you see these Navy buildups. That's why you see this, this news about this flotilla going on in the Black Sea. That's a nice little hop, skip, and a jump down there to Israel. Not to mention, we've already seen, as we brought out to you here on Israeli News Live, that there's already plans that the, uh, the Ukrainian Pershinko has been working with, with, with Erdogan. And, of course, they've already made it clear they're working with other member nations about being able to deal with the occupation of Crimea. They're using them just as the guinea pigs to get the whole issue started there. They want to distract Russia, but it's going to come down to the war that's going to happen right there in the Middle East. Anyway, very interesting things that are happening. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you guys for your support of this work and this ministry. We do appreciate it. IsraeliNewsLive.org if you want to be a con to contribute to the work that we're doing here. We thank you and thank you so much for your love and support and the work we're doing. Shalom.